You were a lot about Donald Trump, then you were a lot about Hillary Clinton, but now we've got Sanders uh, um, firmly in the equation. You've also got another Republican in the equation. So what do the international community need to know about um, how this all ended up? Well, let's start with the Democratic side. Sanders' main issue is economic inequality. For him, most, if not all, of what ails the United States can be traced to economic inequality and its closely related aspect of campaign finance reform. Um, his foreign policy hasn't been as nearly as sort of detailed uh, as Clinton's has. And of course, Clinton was Secretary of State, so she can point to a significant sort of foreign policy, perhaps the most significant foreign policy position that she possibly could have held. On the Republican side, uh, in terms of foreign policy, you have in Trump, Cruz, and Rubio three slightly different visions of what a Republican foreign policy might be. Rubio is the most straightforward inheritor of the George W. Bush legacy. He uh, has many of the same advisors. Cruz is much in the same category. He's taken a few more marginally isolationist tacks, and he's taken a few uh, stances like opposition to torture, which Rubio has not come out uh, for. And then Trump is more difficult to place. He has uh, indicated that he would look to put tariffs on Chinese imports, which is places him outside the uh, entirety of the rest of the field on both sides. Um, he's indicated that he's willing to be very aggressive in pursuit of what he defines as America's national aims. But he's also has a sort of transactional approach. He wants to make American allies pay for American military protection and American security guarantees, which would be out of step with the history of American foreign policy. So when you talk about a very conservative stance on foreign policy with Cruz and Rubio, um, how might someone in the Middle East, for example, or in Europe, see that play out if they get, get to the White House? They'd be more inclined to engage in sort of aggressive military action in the Middle East. They'd be more willing to take unilateral action on military issues. They would probably be more aggressive with Russia. Um, Rubio, in particular, has been, has been vocal about calling for the Iran nuclear deal to be scrapped on day one. Of course, that's very complicated because it's a multilateral deal, so that would lead to many complications with Europe and China and Russia. Um, but it would basically basically be a, a, a fairly strong shift away from the more multilateral uh, view of the Obama administration. And the way Hillary Clinton's been speaking about uh, Barack Obama, the assumption would be that she you'd expect a continuation, roughly, of his foreign policy. Clinton is slightly more hawkish than Obama. She, I think, was in favor of intervention in Syria, which he resolutely opposed. Um, but on the whole, she believes in the same basic set of foreign policy principles of sort of American strength through soft power, uh, backed up by a willingness to use hard power primarily through multilateral means. If Trump does manage a comeback, um, what sort of... Um position will he have in the world when he's alienated so many world leaders? We've got, here, even here in the UK, the Prime Minister has criticised him. He's, he's put himself, he's put his campaign ahead of everything and he's made a lot of enemies around the world. What sort of position would that put America in if he got into the White House? It would be very difficult for him to institute a lot of the policies that he's talked about. The, the wall on the border with Mexico, for example, would be incredibly unpopular and there's no prospect that Mexico would agree to pay for it. Um, I suspect that the weight of sort of pre-existing institutions and the weight of pre-existing international obligations would force him towards a more conventional uh, set of foreign policy choices. But it's very difficult to say. I mean, there's, there hasn't really been a president like Trump in modern history. I think mm. you'd have to go back to Andrew Jackson to find the closest analog. Okay. Uh, it's still early in the day, of course. Jacob, thank you very much indeed.